Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ralph. This week I want to feature one of my favorite builds here. It's a movie car that pretty much needs no introduction uh, and is my favorite movie car. I mean it's really more than just a movie car. It's an actual character. I really enjoyed building this. Um, so I'm going to show it to you and we'll go over some of that. But there's some interesting things about the, the car itself that uh, I think is interesting and, and surrounded in controversy. I mean, first, what do you call her? Everybody knows her as Eleanor. Uh, in the movie, it's a 67 Shelby that's modified, a GT500. And kind of a nemesis for Memphis Rain. I'm, I'm sure everybody's seen the movie Gone in 60 Seconds. One of my favorite movies, and, and this is, you know, like I said, absolutely my favorite movie car. And, and I had to build one. So... But what's interesting about it is a car that's still shrouded in, in lots of controversy on who owns the rights and who can legally make reproduced copies. So it, that, that's kind of interesting. But to get into some of that first, you know, the, the movie itself, the original movie, was produced by uh, and uh, written by the late H.B. Halaki. He produced the original 74 Ghana 60 Seconds and owns the rights and licensing to, to the movie. And his widow, uh, Denise Halaki, I, I'm not really sure how you say that, so I apologize. But she's a widow. But he was alive during the planning of Gone in 60 Seconds, the, the, the reboot that came out with Nicolas Cage, which is what this car is from. And she owns the rights to the movie, and she, you know, Disney uh, cooperated with her to, you know, to get the movie made. So she owns all the exclusive rights to the movie and the characters and to this car. So what's interesting there is there's been a lot of lawsuits on who, because as soon as, as, soon as the car came out, they, they went nuts and people wanted uh, duplicates of the car, which became big business. Even Carroll Shelby got involved and he started reproducing continuation Shelby GT500Es, Eleanor's, and they were supposedly officially licensed and they were going into the Shelby registry. Well, she sued him and won because this is her character, or her husband's character, or her character, and the car in the movie, and the design of the car and everything was copyrighted for, you know, Gone in 60 Seconds, so she owned the rights to it. And she won. Carol Shelby was cease and desist. And there was a few people over the years to making actual real cars. So it was kind of interesting reading and follow along and seeing some of that and, and other companies that got in trouble producing these, whether they were partnered with Carol Shelby or not, and or partnered with her. So there's a whole bunch of these out there as far as real cars or clones, and can you really call them uh, an Eleanor Mustang? Is it really a licensed replica or not? So there's there's a lot of controversy in all of that. And it's fun to read about, especially when one comes up for sale. Is it an actual movie car? Is it a certified, you know, is it is it licensed? Does it have the plaque on the dash? So all of that's a lot of fun. But um, because of those lawsuits, she can't call it a Shelby Mustang. But that's why, you know, like even on Sir Scale Productions box, it says Ford Mustang Eleanor. So they can call it a Mustang Eleanor, but they can't call it a Shelby, and Shelby can't make these even though some of them were made, and I don't know if those cars that he made stayed in the registry or how many of those. Uh, another interesting thing is the car itself was illustrated and drawn up and designed by Hot Rod Illustrator Steve Stanford, so he was contracted to design the car. Chip Foose actually built the car um, for the movie, and I guess a few of them. He was involved in actually building the car, um, and he's famous now as a designer, but he he built the car, but he didn't actually design it. Um, so that's some of the interesting things that go along with the actual car. And then uh, I, I had some fun building this one, and if you get a chance to get your hands on one of these uh, scale production kits, I, I highly encourage it. They're, they're expensive. If they come up, they're really getting expensive, and he keeps... Every now and then they produce um, a couple of them. So I mean, here's the the latest box, which says you know 20th anniversary, and then it's got 2015 on it. And then here's the original box 
from the first run. Um, so my, my build is back from 2010 when I actually completed this. So it's hard for me to believe that I built the model in 2010. But I love the car so much that when they first came out, I jumped on one and bought one. It was 120 bucks at the time and shipped right out of Germany. And loved it so much that I turned around and I bought a second one. Um, and I started to cut that into, well, I actually had a resin copy that Greg Wan provided. I cut that into a convertible. And, but I wanted all the photo etch and all the stuff that's in this box. So I got a second kit. And I turned around and I sold the, the resin body on eBay. And then kind of regretted it. So when he got another batch out, I jumped on it and I bought a, a, a third one. So I actually bought three of these. But the last one ended up costing me $150. But uh, and here's, here's the last one. So if you haven't seen the body, I mean, we're talking... This is right out of the box. I didn't clean up any flash or anything. And this thing actually has a couple of marks from the molds and a couple areas that need real minor tweaking and tuning. Um, but compared to the, the tan resin that this other one was, um, this one required like almost no body work. There's a couple areas, this one, the mold was starting to get a little worn, but um, it's it's still awesome. I mean, most resin casters would, would love to just get it this nice. And he puts scale production right on the inside um, of the roof there. And it came with some awesome stuff. I mean, there's the hood. There's the wheels with the uh, aluminum rings. Talking all the lights right here, if you haven't seen. The decals, the seatbelt material. And then even the gauges right here. And then you got all your photo etch that comes in the kit. And even white metal parts. You've got your air cleaner, your door handles, your steering wheel, mirrors, the light backs, uh, gas cap. There's a distributor in here. And then even comes with some really nice directions that they give you for reference. A reference build that they did. Um, they even sold a character Memphis Rain that you could buy separately and add to it. I never got a chance to get my hands on one of those. And then here's, you know, the the directions and the kit contents. And you know, the originals were molded in tan the first couple batches, and then the latest batch was in gray. And I've had this one about five years. Um, and I plan to do another one. Don't know if I'm going to do pepper gray or go all out like I, I did on, on this one, but I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to put that one away and then really start to show you, show you this one. And uh, like I said, this is actually pepper gray and then the stripes are not um, just gloss black. There's actually metallic flake in those stripes, which you can kind of see on this. Well, it's a black metallic and the, the real cars are that way. And then, um, uh, Greg Wan actually had a local paint mixer mix up the actual paints with the finest metallic that he had. Um, so th this is from the paint that he had mixed up and um, I sprayed it with that on my airbrush. And I've been kind of itching to redo this one or get it a little glossier, but I don't want to tear it apart because I've done so much to this. And please, stay to the end of this video. I will post a lot of the build photos from 2010 when I was building this. So there'll be a, a photo slideshow at the end of this video because I, I did detail a lot of it out. I mean, I got photo etched hood pins on there that I added and you could see all the photo etched grill in there and all the lights. It's just one thing I didn't really like on all the cars, all of the lights. I mean, you've literally got eight lights in the front there. And that's what they in the movie car had, just a, a ton of lights. But I think most of them are cool. And I really love the 67 Shelby and a lot of the mods that they did with the fender flares and the side pipes. And then the photo etch spinners that go on the wheels. you got to bend those a little bit. Clean up the resin. You can see the, the photo etch brakes in there. And then paint the, the rear bumper and um, put foil behind the taillights to make them shine in the license plate. And you can see the, the gas cap right there. And... You can kind of see the interior and some of the stuff I did in there and the big tack in there, which is all in there. And I even did the 
shifter with the go baby go the little red button really hard to see in this and i put the nitrous plate on there but uh, i didn't open the trunk or i put any of the nitrous back there but here's the underside of the chassis let me uh before the hood falls so i had to most of the exhaust and the headers i had to work and tweak those to get this in i did put a 427 engine in here um kind of hard to say what's correct in their replica and uh, but i kept a lot of the amt suspension i did change out the tires these are pegasus hobby tires um, which i really like these i wish i can get another set but i can't um, they stopped making them and uh, so i modified all the exhaust the mufflers and kind of made that to the side pipes and i really liked how this came out and then I put, you can see the seat belts in there that I put in there. And I also flocked the carpet. So I'll show some of my build photos. And there's my 427 engine that I, I put in there. And as you can see, I wired it and put the heater hoses in it. I didn't bother, you know, taking the battery out. I used the, the battery that came in the kit. I don't really remember where that motor came from. There's a lot of stuff sourced from a lot of different models when I when I built this. And you can see the, the photo etch grill there. And I kind of painted the radiator silver and did it more as an aluminum radiator. But I really enjoyed building this one and I, I gotta get the other one built or my at least my convertible built and maybe finish that one. And then uh do that other hard top don't really know what color i'll end up going but uh I, I figured it was time to to show you guys this one a lot of my customs go over really well and this one being such an iconic uh movie car especially for me i i, I love the the dukes of hazards generally that's a cool car and then uh the um bullet mustang which is cool but this one to me, that that's just my my all time favorite. I mean, it's, I mean, when he's talking to her and and just talking to the car, and it really is a character. It's not just just a car in the movie. You know, some of the other cars that are in that movie are awesome too. But this one really is a, a character in that movie, and uh, beats the crap out of her too. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, it's just one of my favorites. If I was gonna build one, I'd want a big block in it. I don't know about the Hillborn injection or whatnot, but I wish Scale uh, Production would offer this kit again or come out. Every time they do, it sells out fast or just boom, you know, they're, they're not available. So I've seen that a number of times and, and I know that uh, when they do pop up on, on eBay, they go for some serious money. But uh, I'm fortunate I've had I've had a few and I've got the one still to build. But again, I, I love the car and I highly recommend it. So if you guys get a chance to get your hands on one, please do. Um, and, and I know Greg Wan is casting a, a resin copy. Also, uh, not quite as complete as uh, scale production was. Um, but uh, there's a possibility there for you guys too. So uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for tuning in. And, and please comment and share. I, I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you think. And, and you guys, you have a wonderful day.